Hey there, how's it going guys? Well, first of all, excuse my voice and appearance. I've been sick, so I'm a little bit like death warmed over right now, but wanted to do a vi video. Um, so this video goes out more so to neurotypicals, um, people without autism, um, but us ASPs, definitely feel free to share it or, or listen, I, you might enjoy it as well, but um, it's mostly for the the people who might be watching who have friends and loved ones or coworkers that have an autism spectrum condition and want to learn. And if you're watching and that's you, I want to welcome you and thank you for watching. I just think it's so amazing when there are people who want to understand. Um, that's really the most important thing I think that most of us want is that others can try and understand us. But what I want to talk about today is the use of the words high functioning. Uh, I am going to ask you guys to please not use those words and I will explain why. So first of all to give you background, but generally speaking the term high functioning has been used to describe people who do not have a delay in language. You know, someone with, I guess, what you would call more classic autism, um, maybe either nonverbal um, early in life, or they may continue to be nonverbal throughout their life. But the distinguishing factor is, did they have a language delay or not? Now, here is what I think the problem is. And believe me, I was guilty of this too, because I didn't even know I had Asperger's until like six or seven months ago. Um, but you hear the words high functioning and what you think is, oh, that person functions well. Of course, why wouldn't you think that? I mean, yeah, it makes perfect sense. So here's, here's the problem. It's not what that means, number one. Um, yeah, and, and let me explain how those words are heard to me. Um, and I will not speak for everybody, but I have read a lot of people on Facebook have similar feelings. So I have, I know it's not just me. I know there's other people as well. But how you hear that is, first of all, oh, oh but it's, it's not that bad. Yeah, it's minimizing is how it comes across that oh, well, you, you know, you seem fine, you're, you're doing okay, you, yeah, you, you have that little thing, that, that autism thing, but like, no, oh, it's, it's not so bad. And let me tell you something, if someone has this diagnosis, I guarantee you they have been through a lot. And you have no idea what goes into their daily life so that they can just live. Um, and some people, they're not doing as great as you think they are, you know. So that's how it's heard, is very minimizing to what we've been through and go through. Um, the other thing is that people don't realize that some people, and I think it's more common with women, is that's what I've heard, um, are better able to mask their autism They've studied, they've analyzed, they've worked so hard. You have no idea to try and be what other people think is acceptable, likable, you know, just be neurotypical basically. Trying to be like non-autistics. And that has had a huge cost. It is depleting just a lot of us have health issues and I think that's been one of the things that's like really exacerbated our health issues is the the energy that goes into containing our natural impulses and sort of 
it's like sort of these masks that you wear and you don't even know you're doing it I think most of the time but I think it's for me it was more this constant analyzing and censoring like that censor of oh I shouldn't say that oh I'm supposed to say this now this would sound compassionate right now or oh I can't say that or oh I'm not smiling enough the constant voice in your head trying to tell you what to be doing at any given moment so that you'll be okay in other people's eyes there's actually a book called Pretending to be Normal, and I think that's just the perfect phrase. So the other thing I think when I hear, oh, you know, you're you're high functioning, what I also hear is, well, you know, you're you're not one of them, which is also incredibly offensive, by the way. <laughs> um, you're you're not one of them. You're you're okay, you're acceptable, and you're like one of us. And I guess I'm talking more from the point of view of someone who's late diagnosed, because that's all I really know. So if you're late diagnosed, you've probably been having all these coping mechanisms, and you realize you can't keep doing that anymore. You have to let those go somehow. And so by somebody saying something like that, what I hear is, well, as long as you stay the way you are and you continue to act like us, then you'll be okay. Because you know what? You, yeah, you're, you're not like, you don't want to be like those people. Um, so, and that's the other thing I really want to make clear. Like, by saying the words high functioning to us, you're, it's so offensive to people with classic autism. I mean, it, it ugh. It, it totally degrades these people, and some of whom are brilliant, you know, um, amazing people. They just have certain challenges. Um, there's so many great examples of people that we all know about. So it's, yeah, it doesn't, it just is bad. Don't say it. Just don't say those words in any context. Now, I really believe in my heart that there's no bad intention. And I've tried to really think about this. What this would be like from the perspective of a neurotypical, especially with somebody who's a late diagnosed autistic, that I'm wondering, and you know, you guys can certainly tell me if this is right or not. I would love to know. You know, as a neurotypical with someone in your life that gets a new diagnosis of autism, I would imagine that, you know, you care about that person and you probably don't want to really think that that person's been through that much. Like, that that hurts, you know, it hurts to think that they've maybe been through a lot. It might be hard to to really take, you know. You don't want to think that that person's suffered. Um, I also wonder if neurotypicals would be scared. Like, does this mean, you know, my, my friend, my loved one is going to change? What does that mean for our relationship? You know, um, and maybe there's questions that, I don't know, maybe there's like a denial too. You don't want to really think that that person that you know and love and that the way you know them you probably don't want to think that that's not true you don't want to think that like maybe you didn't know them as well as you think that in some ways that's been what you've seen as a coping mechanism now I want to hope and believe that you know the people that really care about us that they know us like in our hearts and not just for like our coping mechanisms you know the facades the masks that we wear but there might be people in our lives that they just like the mask you know and they will probably go away um, but I've had to just work on this myself in believing that the people in my life who really care about me and hoping that all along that they were able to see the real me. So regardless, I can't live the way I was living with, you know, using so much energy to 
constantly mount it to myself and be a certain way. And I don't know. It's, I still can't figure all that out yet. It's still new. So, to get back to the subject. Um, yes. So, I guess that pretty much wraps it up. Um, and I, I guess I just want to thank you again. If you are a neurotypical, I really appreciate you watching. And, you know, please, please share the information. Let people know. Because I know you don't want to hurt anybody or insult anybody or minimize what they've been through. And that's how those words come across. You know, instead you maybe you might want to ask them, you know, what's it been like? What have the challenges been like? Really, you know, trying to understand. And, and you know, a lot of us have a really hard time articulating in conversation because when we're with people it creates anxiety so you know you could also ask that person like they could draw it they could write something they could do a video that ju they just share with you we are more comfortable in more one-sided communication because we're not dealing with input that's coming in so um, so those are just a few suggestions 